Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Reverend John Turner, and I'll be leading services for Sunday, April 4th. But before we begin, I'd like to start with the opening gasho. If you'd put your palms together. Namo Amidabuts. 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 Well, thank you for joining me. Uh, I really appreciate uh, our gatherings on Sunday mornings. Um, so for today, for the order of service, uh, we'll start with the Jusege on page 39 uh, in the service book and also in the downloadable uh, PDF from ocbuddhist.org. Uh, but today, uh, I'm also going to have the text that we'll be chanting in slides so we can chant heads up and uh, the, the uh, text will go by uh, as we're chanting. I think that's helpful. Uh, then we'll also have a musical offering from Stacy St. James and Eugene Scott. Uh, they'll be playing one of my favorite songs from Elvis Costello, uh, What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding. And I think that's an important song uh, during uh, 2020 and the beginning of 2021. Uh, then we'll have a selected saying on page 13, number four. Uh, I will give a Dharma talk, and then we'll close the Dharma talk with uh, repeating that selected saying, and then we'll have announcements. And today we're going to have a very special announcement, uh, a news flash, a news story of our upcoming virtual Hanamatsuri festival. And that's uh, gonna be a real treat. So to begin sutra chanting, uh, we'll first gasho. Naman dabuts, naman dabuts, naman dabuts, naman dabuts, naman dabuts, naman dabuts, naman dabuts. Then we'll bring the service book to our forehead. Gagon cho sing on he shim jo do shing on fuman zo se fu jo sho nga ga o mu ryo ko fu i nai se shu fu sai sho bin gu se fu jo sho nga ga shi jo bu tsu do Myo sho cho ji po k 
苦境未消問、政府上昇が、利欲人少年、上映修文業、死ぐ無常道、一生天人知、人力縁大公、不少無才道、少女三苦妙、高才主役難、開一営言、飯子も安、閉塞症悪道、つだつ全修文、高層上満足、異様老寿法、日月修寿期、天皇恩復元、一周解放ぞ、高生苦毒法、上王内集中、西法四四苦、苦よい細物、具足集徳本、元年出場満、得意三害を、女仏無限地、つだつみ不祥、願がくえり、投資最初損、死願にゃこか、大戦の感動、国苦笑天人、とうちんみょうげ、なまんだぶ、なまんだぶ、なまんだぶ、なまんだぶ、なまんだぶ、なまんだぶ、がんにしくどく、平等せいさい、どうほんぼないいしん、おじょう、ナマンダーブツ、ナマンダーブツ、ナマンダーブツ、ナマンダーブツ、ナマンダーブツ、ナマンダーブツ、ナマンダーブツ、ナマンダーブツ、ナマンダーブツ、ナマンダーブツ。Alright, thank you very much.、Uh, and now we are going to have a musical offering by Stacy St. James and Eugene Scott, a song by, made famous by Elvis Costello. What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding?、Um, I think this is a,、uh, maybe the theme song、uh, for 2021.、Uh, it's been a rough、uh, couple of weeks, and、uh, I hope people will take this song to heart. It's a, a, it's a different narrative in which to see the world and live your life. Searching for. 
All right, thank you very much, uh, Stacy and Eugene. Uh, I'm off camera, and I literally got goosebumps and almost started to tear up. Uh, sometimes it seems like we're searching for light in the darkness, and uh, there's no there's nowhere to find a hope. And so, uh, but together, uh, we march forwards to make the world a better place. So, for our opening uh, statement, our selected saying. I'd like to read this, uh, number four, from the Dhammapada. The secret of health for both mind and body is not to mourn for the past, not to worry about the future, and not to anticipate troubles, but to live wisely and earnestly for the present. Namo Amidabuts, Namo Amidabuts, Namo Amidabuts, Namo Amidabuts, Namo Amidabuts. So uh, when times are difficult, um, I kind of think about, you know, I don't want to give a Dharma talk that's too dark, but I also don't want to give Dharma talks that are Pollyanna and uh, kind of live outside of reality. And uh, there's never a good time for this talk, but I changed my thinking. I think maybe now is the perfect time. Um, we can live our lives uh, factlessness, or we can live our lives Factfulness. And factlessness is actually a word. I looked it up. Uh, so this talk, I think, is neither optimistic or pessimistic. It's realistic. Uh, it's saying that we often don't see the world correctly. And when we don't see the world correctly as it is, uh, it can make us feel uh, depressed, uh, unnecessarily so. It can also make us feel optimistic and attacking problems that aren't really problems. Um, a lot of people now are living a life that's not evidence-based. It's not fact-based. Um, I've seen a lot of interviews about uh, issues on the news, and it seems like people are driven by opinions. And they'll say, well, that's just my opinion, and we choose to disagree. But it's not an opinion. Uh, most of what goes on in the world is, is based on evidence and facts. And we need to remain open and assimilate and learn as we grow. I read an interesting article about Abraham Lincoln 
that it's not really where he uh, started, but where he ended up that made him such a great president. And this is the quality of great American presidents is their ability to grow and assimilate new ideas and change their position. And it seems like today everybody's uh, trapped in their own silos uh, based on um, feelings and opinions and emotions. And so after I gave a Dharma talk once, um, I can't remember if it was positive or, or a little bit pessimistic, but a woman came up to me and said, you've got to read this book called Factfulness. You know, it's so much better to be full of facts uh, than to be factless. And so it's written by a Swedish statistician in 2018, so a very recent book, by Han, uh, Hans Rosling and his son, Ola Rosling, and daughter-in-law, Anna Rosling. Uh, in the book, Rosling suggests that the vast majority of human beings are wrong about the state of the world, that we just don't see things as they are. Uh, 10 reasons we're wrong about the world and why things are better than you think. Uh, and I got a lot of this material uh, from a website called Gapminder. So there's a gap between what we believe and the way things really are. So here's Hans Rosling. Uh, you can see the st statistician's chart behind him. Uh, you see Uganda, India, Thailand. Uh, and so what he does is he lets the data drive him. Uh, he looks at the facts. Um, and this isn't media driven. It's not opinion driven. But what he does is he goes out and he collects data. And he claims that most of us don't see the world clearly because we're not looking at evidence. And so he put together a quiz to kind of prove his point that we're gonna to take together. It's about uh, 12 questions, I think. And we're gonna do it together. They're easy questions. Uh, so number one, in all low-income countries across the world today, how many girls finish primary school? So low-income countries, I would say, I would say 20%. So it's 60, much higher than I thought. Where does the majority of the world's population live? Low income countries, middle income countries, or high income countries? So I'll let you pick, but my first guess was A, low income. Middle. In the last 20 years, the proportion of the world population living in extreme poverty has almost doubled, remained more or less the same, or it's almost halved. So I guess I'll be a little bit more optimistic and I'll say remained more or less the same over the past 20 years. So it's halved. What is the life expectancy of the world today? Would you expect to live 50 years, 60 years, or 70 years? So I'll say uh, 50. Wow, it's 70 years, and this is worldwide. There are 2 billion children in the world today, aged 0 to 15 years old. How many children will there be in the year uh, 2100, according to the United Nations? So 80 years from now, there's 2 billion now. In 80 years, are there going to be 4 billion children, 3 billion children, or 2 billion. So I assumed it would double. I would say 4 billion. So that's an amazing thing. Number six, the United Nations predicts that by 2100, the world population will have increased by another 4 billion people. What is the main reason? There will be more children. There will be more adults. There will be more very old people. I would have thought of children. So there'll be more adults, 15 to 74. So this may be because life is expectancy is longer. How did the number of deaths per year from natural disasters change over the last uh, 20 years? So deaths from disaster, more than doubled, remained about the same, decreased to less than half. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna have to go more positive. I'm sensing a pattern. So I'm going to choose C, 
decreased over the past 20 years. Okay, I got one right. Uh, this one's a little tricky because it's a graph question. There are roughly 7 billion in the world today. Which map shows best where they live? So 7 billion people in the world. Are they mainly uh, in uh, Asia? Uh, on B, are they uh, a little bit more uh, in Africa? Or C, is it kind of balanced between uh, Europe, Africa, Asia, and uh, North and South America? Okay, so I think this is saying that there's still a whole bunch of open space um, in North and South America and Europe and Africa. How many of the world's one-year-old children today have been vaccinated against some disease? 20%, 50%, or 80%? I'll go 50. Wow, 80% of the world's children have been vaccinated uh, in some way. Worldwide, 30-year-old men have spent 10 years in school on average. How many years have women of the same age spent in school? So I'm gonna go positive and say nine. Wow, okay. In 1996, tigers, giant pandas, and black rhinos were all listed as endangered. How many of these three species are more critically endangered today? So how many of these have gotten worse? And I would say uh, A, uh, two of them I'm sure have gotten worse. So none of them have gotten worse. How many people in the world have some access to electricity? 20%, 50% or 80%. So I'm going to go B, 50. Wow, 80%. So, you know, I'm one, uh, one little point of evidence, but uh, these results are much better than I thought they would be. Uh, I thought things were not nearly, not, not to say things are great, I don't want to give that impression, but that we've made more progress than I thought. So this, I think Hans isn't suggesting that everything's great. Uh, I think he's suggesting that things are better than we think and that we should be a little bit more positive and uh, what we're doing is working and maybe we should double down and keep doing it more. So whatever we're doing is, is really helping and that's a good thing. So I thought this was funny. Uh, they, gave, they always give tests uh, to monkeys or chimpanzees. Uh, there's a funny story that if you had enough chimpanzees typing on a typewriter, Sooner or later, they could uh, write randomly uh, Romeo and Juliet by uh, William Shakespeare. But if you look at this, uh, on average, random chance, uh, monkeys get four questions right. But look, 80% of the humans scored less than four right. They got three or low. So I'm, I did worse than a monkey on this test. So this means I could have just randomly guessed I could have closed my eyes and I would have gotten a better score. So my intuition is worse than a random chance. Uh, only 10% of the humans uh, was able to beat the monkeys. So it's always the monkeys. So we've kind of identified uh, a, a situation, uh, a problem of perception, a problem of cognition, uh, maybe a problem of focus. And so this is one of the ways that they uh, show this. This is a, a, an evolutionary adaptation we have. As human beings, we tend to focus on threats and risks uh, because when you're in the jungle and you hear a noise, you don't go, oh, that might be a butterfly. You immediately think it might be a lion, it might be a tiger, I gotta climb up a tree as fast as I can. So we're kind of hardwired to do this, uh, but it's not helpful in modern society. The other thing we have difficulty doing is we're used to analyzing risk based on our community. Uh, my family grew up in the San Joaquin Valley in Lindsay, California, and the news traveled within maybe a 20, 30, 40 mile radius. And if something happened, they'd hear about it. But now because of the internet, uh, we hear about everything that happens everywhere in the world. And it seems like something terrible is happening everywhere, every day. But our, our, our intuition, our perception is off because the sample size is so great, we don't take that into account. I mean, we're not used to evaluating risk worldwide. We're used to doing it within our communities, within the people we know. So we have a dramatic attention filter 
From all the facts in the world, our attention filter selects what is most dramatic. Uh, it makes the world look more dramatic than it really is. And I found another word here that I added just the other day. It's called doom scrolling. When you're in Facebook or you're on uh, YouTube or you're um, on CNN or CNN.com or Huffington Post, uh, we click on the things we look for things that are dramatic and we tend to focus in and we end up doing this thing called doom scrolling and it's exhausting and we tend to read every bad news story uh, that's available to us. And this is also somewhat by design. Um, internet providers, content providers make money when you click. They need clicks. They want people to click. And so I've noticed um, a headline will say something like, Joe Biden loses his temper and tells off so-and-so. And I click on it and I read it and I'm like, Joe Biden didn't tell off anyone. He didn't lose his temper. Nobody got told off. The headlines are so much more provocative than the stories. And we have to be very careful about doom scrolling. Uh, another uh, wonderful example of this is on uh, Netflix. There was a documentary called The Social Dilemma that uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, Snapchat, Reddit, uh, all the things that I don't use, but I do use YouTube a lot. Um, they try to feed you stories. They want to get you hooked. They want you to click. And uh, I didn't really see this as sinister. Uh, maybe it's worse than sinister. They just want to make money. So whatever you click on YouTube, if you click on a story about um, a volcano, within a day, your feed is suddenly filled with volcano videos. Um, if you click on uh, stories about conspiracy theories, your feed will be filled with conspiracy theories. So it's kind of funny. Um, I use the OCBC uh, YouTube channel as my login. Uh, so I have to be careful. Everybody can see what my history is, but I'm in good shape. My history on YouTube is lots and lots of cute, funny uh, doggy videos. And I also have a lot of videos on cosmology. Uh, what's beyond the observable universe? Uh, what are asteroids made of? Um, how uh, gravity is just a concept in space time. So that's my feed. Uh, I have a bazillion doggy videos and tons of cosmology videos. So, but if I clicked on uh, a conspiracy theory about the uh, coronavirus or about vaccinations, I'm sure within a day or two, I'd be overwhelmed uh, with these kind of videos. And it's distorting because you think everything is about that, but they're feeding you what you will click on. So uh, I don't know if this is uh, evil, but it's a way to make money. Um, my son once told me that they do this because nobody will pay for anything on the internet. So I wanted to show you an example of clickbait. Uh, this is a very um, innocent example. Um, I love the show Ozark on Netflix. Um, it's a little dark. It's not for kids. Uh, and they're coming on to their fourth season. And I think it's the final season, but it's planned. They're going to they're gonna nail the dismount and the ending's going to be wonderful. But I just finished the third season and this came up. And this is from Huffington Post. It says, these shows are off Netflix, effective immediately. Well, these are the two main characters from uh, Ozark. Uh, Justin Bateman on the left, and on the right, she's super famous, but I don't know her name. And I immediately clicked on this. I thought, oh my God, how could they cancel Ozark? This is insane. Uh, they didn't cancel Ozark. Ozark is not canceled. <laughs> There's a fourth season coming. This has nothing to do with the story. They never said Ozark was being canceled, but they showed me the two main characters from the show and they said, look, these shows are being canceled. They're not being canceled. That is clickbait. So uh, this is kind of the problem. There's also some perception problems. Uh, Hans Rosling discusses things that our mind does. And I'm going to talk about this in part two of this Dharma talk. Uh, this is part one. Uh, we've uh, stated the problem, uh, we've looked at some of the causes, uh, and next time we're going to look at solutions. So this is uh, one of the ways we can solve the problem. It's both the problem and the solution. Uh, Hans 
uh, Rosling says that, that we have an instinct to look at the gaps. Uh, we tend to look at the differences. So, you know, maybe this black stone here on the right are um, students that get 95% uh, in their math classes. And then you have students on the left who can barely pull 40%. They're getting Fs. And so we tend to focus on the A students and the F students. And we wonder, how have we failed these students? And it's not saying that we shouldn't make things better, but we ignore everything in the middle. Um, there are very rich countries in the world, and there are some very poor countries. But the vast majority of the countries in the world fall in this great middle. Uh, most countries, it's like a normal distribution I've gotten from this chart, that 80% most, most, of most things lie in this majority, in this middle. But we tend to look at the, the, the gaps, the, how far away the extremes are, instead of realizing that they're connected within this huge, huge middle. The next one I like a lot is the negativity instinct. Um, things may be going bad. Uh, we may be having more violence uh, as a country than we did five or six years ago. But that doesn't mean the trend is negative. Uh, the overall trend over the last hundred years, perhaps, is trending up. But that doesn't mean you don't have intervals where you take two steps back and things do get worse. Uh, maybe we get lackadaisical. Uh, maybe we think the problem's solved and we move on. Um, racism is something we have to deal with every day. It's pernicious. Uh, I think I heard uh, Joe Biden once say that racism never goes away. It just goes to sleep. And so we have to be on it all the time. Uh, we can't name viruses after geographical locations. Uh, this is why the World Health Organization doesn't do that anymore because it leads to racial tension. Uh, it's not, viruses are named after their biological name, their chemical structure, their molecular structure. They're not named on a town or a city. Uh, so we have to keep this in mind. We have to be aware of when we dip because we wanna get back to the, to the normal uh, upward trend, but it doesn't mean that all hope is lost and that we've totally um, lost all progress we've made. It means we need to jump on it, but it doesn't mean we failed. And then uh, at our next time when we meet, uh, I have some examples of, of really amazingly positive trends uh, for modern humans. Um, you know, I hear about global warming, there's gonna be a lot more pandemics, um, it's all very scary, um, but some things are looking good. We are making progress. And if we can make progress in other areas, we can make progress in the pandemics and global warming as well. So here's a chart uh, from the 1930s on deaths from disasters. Uh, these are 10 year averages. You step back, you get a big, large perspective. And if you add up uh, tornadoes, hurricanes, uh, earthquakes, um, the number of deaths per uh, thousand per year has dropped uh, orders of magnitude. We are really good at predicting the weather. We make safer cars. Um, we don't have a chart for this, but I think auto accidents are way down, uh, or auto uh, deaths from accidents is way down. So this is something surprising. We hear about disasters all the time. And it seems like it's, you know, I've heard people say that we're, we're hitting, you know, we're, hit, I mean, we're having more disasters than we've ever had. Uh, and maybe, but we manage them now. We know what we're doing. Another one is the number of girls of primary school age that are enrolled in school. And this is just from the 1970s. Um, this doesn't go back to the 1900s. So since 1970, uh, this is... Uh, you know, I was 10 years old. We've gone from 65% girls enrolled in school to 90% in 2015. And you can see, even in this graph, it goes down and up, right? It goes down in the 80s, and it ticks down a little bit in the late 90s. But the overall trend, this is what statisticians do, there's always some noise in your measurement. There's always outliers. But if you step back far enough and you use enough data, you can see a very positive trend for the education of young women 
uh, throughout the world. So we're going to do more of this when we meet for not factlessness, but the second part of this Dharma talk next time will be mind the gap. It's really important that we mind the gap between what we think is true and what is actually true. And when that gap gets big, uh, we do not deal well with the world. So uh, again, we want to be factful, not factless. We want to try to remain objective. And this is hard to do when you're locked at home in a pandemic, uh, you're scared, you're frightened. Uh, our logical and rational thinking uh, is in jeopardy when we become very nervous and anxious. Um, we don't think clearly. We tend to react uh, uh, quickly rather than responding uh, slowly. And so we will look at this in more detail uh, when we come back for part two. I think it will be uh, maybe the first Sunday in May. So hang tight. Uh, this book is easily available on uh, Amazon and Barnes & Noble. So I would like to close my Dharma talk with some word that is very hopeful. Namo Amida Buts. 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 And we'll close with the selected saying as the theme uh, for this Dharma talk. The secret of health for both mind and body is not to mourn for the past, not to worry about the future, and not to anticipate troubles, but to live wisely and earnestly for the present. Namo Amidabuts, Namo Amidabuts, Namo Amidabuts, Namo Amidabuts, Namo Amidabuts. And now uh, we will have announcements. Uh, the first one, uh, oh, I recognize this stunning young minister. Uh, we are trying something new. Uh, we've been having uh, Dharma school uh, every Sunday, and we've been making announcements for that. But we also decided maybe we should have our adult study class again. Uh, people have asked, been asking for interactivity. So we are going to have an adult study Dharma discussion uh, today, uh, Sunday, April 4th at 11 o'clock, uh, and it will be via Zoom. And uh, there's a Google form on the ocbuddhist.org uh, webpage, and I hope to all see you then, and we will discuss uh, today's service. Next, uh, we will have a Dharma school, as I mentioned, starting at 11. Uh, the adult study class will also be starting at 11, so both kids and adults can go off and discuss the Dharma. Then next, uh, we are having our Hanumatsuri uh, special service, uh, and it will premiere on YouTube on Sunday, April 11th at 10 a.m. Our guest speaker in English and Japanese is Reverend Hibiki Murakami. He's at the Los Angeles uh, Hompa Honganji uh, Buddhist Temple. We call it Nishi. And we're also having a virtual Hanamatsuri festival on April 17th. And information is on the ocbuddhist.org website. But... Uh, this is the news flash video that came in. Uh, remember we said that all news doesn't have to be negative? Here's some of that really good news I was talking about uh, in the Dharma talk. Welcome to Sangha News. We bring you the latest news from OCBC. Hanumatsuri is the Buddha's birthday. Here at OCBC, we celebrate this joyous occasion with fun games and delicious food. This year, we will be having a virtual Hanumatsuri. But before the festivities begin, here are some things you need to know. From April 4th to the 17th, we will have a virtual silent auction. Have fun bidding on items. Anyone can join. Just click on the link to participate. Then, on April 17th, OCBC's virtual Hanumatsuri will take place from 11.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. The festivities will go on all day, so make sure you don't miss out. Starting off the day at 11.30 a.m., you will have welcome message performed by cultural performances and exhibitions. Go to the OCBC YouTube channel to check it out. Don't leave just yet because at 1 o'clock, it's children's hour. We will be playing festival games and having fun from the comforts of our own homes. Sign up on this Google form. Be there or be square. Then, from 2.30 to 5.30 p.m., you can pick up your pre-ordered bentos. Four different bentos are able to be purchased. 
If you haven't bought yours yet, grab your phone and order on OCBC's website. Thanks for supporting OCBC and local restaurants. Finally, at 6.30 is the main event, Family Night. Families will be able to socialize together in the virtual meeting. You can use the same Google Form link to sign up. Thanks for listening to our news broadcast. Perhaps you've already heard about the virtual Hanumat City, but Orange, you glad I told you anyway? All right, thank you very much. That was wonderful. So reset your attention filter to uh, news like that we just received uh, hot off the press. Uh, so here is the uh, schedule that's up on the ocbuddhist.org website. Uh, here is the um, menu for uh, to-go bento boxes. And I think there's a limited supply. So you want to order quickly. And uh, I ordered and it was a very uh, nice customer experience uh, that rivaled Amazon. I, I really liked it. Uh, next, we'll be having a, uh, a Dharma School Teachers Conference open to the public, uh, meeting the challenges of today's Dharma School. Uh, we're going to have a very special keynote speaker, Piper Toyama, who's the founding headmaster of the Pacific Buddhist Academy uh, in Hawaii. Uh, I've heard him speak. He's quite excellent. Next, uh, Origami Crane Project. Uh, the goal is to fold uh, 3,000 folded origami cranes, uh, I believe, uh, to put up in the Hondo Lobby when we return uh, as, a, as a physical sign of hope. And then Hatsumaidi, uh, May 16th, 2021, uh, will be held. Uh, it coincides with Gotane service, special service. Uh, Hatsumaidi, or first service, is the presentation of infants uh, by families to the Sangha. So it's going to be virtual. Uh, children who were born in 2019, 2020, and 2021 who have not yet been presented. And the reason why there's such a wide range of years is because of COVID. Uh, we got caught off guard uh, when COVID hit last year and we weren't able to uh, have this ceremony. There's an application uh, in the April Korean or on the OCBC website. And the deadline for submission is April 30th, uh, 2021. And then uh, we'd love for you to become a member. Uh, we call it a sustaining member. Uh, anybody who attends services is a member, but we would like to have, uh, if you'd like to help sustain the Buddhist tradition, uh, help propagate the Dharma, um, it's membership that helps us uh, be able to have these kind of services, uh, be able to carry on uh, the propagation of Buddhism uh, virtually. And so this is the, the oil that greases the, the Dharma engine. And uh, I can think of a lot of things to donate to, but I can't think of one uh, more deserving uh, than the Buddhist path uh, and opening this up for all beings to live a life of factfulness. Uh, and also uh, at the Buddhist, Buddhist uh, Vista Buddhist Temple as well, uh, vbtemple.org, or you can go to ocbuddhist.org slash membership. So I want to thank you very much. Uh, I hope you'll see the world differently. Uh, have your attention filter on uh, happy, uh, not dramatic, and see how your life feels uh, when you're not bombarded uh, with doom scrolling. So thank you very much. Please join me in Gasho. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo All right, hope to see you at Adult Study Dharma Discussion at 11 a.m. Bye-bye. Now we're going to switch to our left hand.
start with uh, wrapping the ball around the, our head. So start slow while it's moving the ball from one hand to the other, wrapping it around his head. If you have a hard time switching hands, just hold it with both hands and just kind of move the ball around to just get that motion down.